so today we're going to be working on kumite, which kumite loosely translates out to fighting. If you actually take the kanji itself, kumi means joining, and te means hand, so joining hands, right, or that type of thing. Um, so when people talk about kumite, they're, they're typically talking about fighting or fighting techniques. There's a major difference between fighting technique and self-defense technique, okay? And um, I've done numerous videos on that, so you guys can just go to my playlist, look up Goshin Jutsu on my playlist, and you guys can see that. Um, but I want to be, I want to make sure we cover all those little loose ends here real quick, okay? So Goshin Jutsu or self-defense means you're generally going to be in some sort of Shazen or natural posture. It's an unexpected attack. You're not in a fighting position. You don't got your hands up and ready. You're not in a ready position. You're bent over putting groceries in your trunk or something like that. Like it's a surprise attack and you don't know it's coming, right? Fighting is two people know, you got your dukes up, I got my dukes up, here we go, knuckle up, now we're gonna fight. So when one person doesn't expect to get attacked, the attacks coming from the attacker to the person who's not expecting the attack are much different then those of someone who two people are going to be going at it, right? So the techniques in that realm is self-defense or Goshin Jutsu. Over here we have Kumite. Kumite are fighting, okay? Now here within the Buddha Ryukai we have numerous different types of um, Kumite or Randori that we teach here within this particular organization. And um, one reason why we've had thousands of students all over the world join the organization is because of the the reality approach that we put towards our Koru training, Koru Ninjutsu, Koru Bujutsu, and we put a reality touch to it so people can really truly utilize the skill sets of these ancient warriors in the modern day. Another reason why we have so many people leave the organization is because we put a reality touch to the ancient ways and they don't want to go through the fucking training, right? It looks good and they think that's what they want to do and then they get in there and it's so hard. I can't tell you how many times, well you guys know this, Countless times, you guys have all seen people come in here and seen people, they go in here, they get their ass kicked, they get it handed to them, and then they leave, and then we see that they're doing another martial art. And then I'll be like, oh, you do another martial art? Yeah. Would you, you getting your ass whooped over there? No. This is great. Well, if you're coming over here and you're getting your ass kicked, and you go off and do something else, and you're not getting challenged, you're not getting your ass kicked, how is that better? Do you know what I mean? But you guys have all seen it. You've seen them come and go. You know what I mean? Just hell, just last week we had someone get all pissed at me because he's been getting his ass kicked here for the last couple weeks, right? I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Getting his ass whooped, getting his ass whooped, and finally it's like, you know, well, I quit. Okay. You know, because it gets hard. You know, it, it's difficult. And that fighting part of the martial arts, I do realize there's a lot of traditional martial arts schools that claim to teach ancient warrior arts. And for any school that says that, that if you guys are claiming to take a school that trains in whatever school, whatever Yuha, Koryu Ninjutsu, or Koryu Bujutsu, or whatever martial arts you're doing, if you're training in traditional martial art um, from Samurai or Ninja, right? Uh, Koryu or whatever, even if it's Gendai Budo. But if you're training in traditional Japanese martial arts and you're not doing Kumite or Randori, and I'm gonna explain the differences here in a second, but if you're not doing that, if you're not going to use, I'll use an English word, sparring, then um, you should apologize to the arts that you bow to. And the reason for that, I'm going to go back, define a few things, and explain to you why the importance of it within Koryu training. Randori means chaos talking. That's the, generally speaking, there's lots of different ways to explain what Randori means, but for the general sense, I want you guys to think, okay, Randori, uh, Randori is a Japanese word, it means chaos talking. It means one person is going to be doing something in an environment that they don't know what's coming at them. Now, some schools have different types of randori. Like there are people where they stand in the middle and someone attacks here and someone attacks there and someone attacks here. And it's, just, it's chaos, chaos talking, right? You just got to throw this person, throw the person, go to this person, and then group training type stuff. Some people call regular uh, point sparring randori. Different schools have their own version of randori, okay? Um, and that is what that is, and we're not really needing to get into that. But I just want you to know that Randori is the, 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 the name of the book. And inside that book called Randori, which means chaos talking, there are many chapters. 
One chapter would be striking or boxing. Another chapter could be kickboxing. Another chapter could be grappling. Another chapter could be in the clinch, you know, where you're grabbing, but you're both standing up, right? Another probably could be ground fighting. Another chapter could be um, weapons, empty-handed versus weapons. Another one could be multiple attackers, empty-handed versus multiple attackers, where you have to fight your way out of a really bullshit situation. So Randori itself is a big, big generic banner word. It's not specific. The chapters are specific. Generally speaking, here within the Buddha Dikai, we have a evolution, or I guess it's our own word, but eh, uh, or we evolve our randori, and we start from what we call position drills, right? And the position drills, which is how to get a position on the ground for those of you guys um, on the other side of this camera, that's kind of like wrestling, if you will. They, they're on, you know, we're doing wrestling drills and we try to get top position and, and, and you know, it's, it's the most basic white belt, yellow belt stuff, but we do that because we want the students to learn what it's like to get pushed and pulled and, and having someone trying to, you know, outdo them physically, but not really, you know, getting the shit kicked out of them, punching and kicking, because we generally give those drills to, you know, the white belts and the yellow belts and, you know, that kind of stuff. But then that goes to Nagewaza, which are throwing. You know, I grab, you grab, we're in the clinch, and we're trying to do the various throws, Oso de Garai, or Ogoshi, or Rote Sayanagi, or Ipan, or whatever throw what we're doing. And then that moves into, then we have a Temiwaza, which is striking technique, and that kind of looks like, in a, in a generic way, boxing slash kickboxing match, where you're using your punches and kicks in a round, you know, to, to outstrike the other opponent. And then that turns into Nawaza. We then evolve and we start doing Nawaza rounds, which is the, that's where you're doing the, the groundwork. You're grappling on the ground, you're doing the quote unquote for the, you guys on the other end of the camera, the submission fighting where you're looking for a choke or a lock and you're rolling on the ground and, and that sort of thing. But then that turns into what we call Kumite. So Kumite in the Buddha Yukai has its own specific, you know, um, realm. Because if you go to, like, say, a karate school up the road, kumite could be the way that they compete in a specific competition. Kumite here, when we study uh, here at this school, it means we're, it's all-encompassing. So what that means is, when we, we're going to say we're going to practice on kumite, that means we're going to be doing um, striking, throwing, grappling, working in and out of the clinch. It also means we could be going up against multiple attackers. But Kumite also involves those sparring or randori training with weapons. So for us, Kumite means it all, where everything happens. You're throwing it all in the bucket. So you catch what I'm saying? So randori is chaos talking. You have all these different things. But when you start combining two, you start combining them, then we get what we call that, right? It isn't just throwing or just grappling or just striking. If we take throws and, and grappling and striking and we combine them, that's how we practice our kumite. Otherwise, you guys know that. I'll say, okay, today, guys, we're going to work at Temiwaza's, you know, sparring drills. You guys know we're going to do stand-up. If I'm going to say, okay, guys, we're going to work Nagewaza sparring drills, you know we're going to be doing throws. Okay, guys, we're going to be working Nawaza or Kumuch uh, sparring drills, you guys know we're grappling. If you know what I mean? But if I say, okay, guys, we're going to be full-fledged kumite, you guys know it's going to be striking, grappling, throws, takedowns, and ground fighting. I mean, you guys know that. Right? Okay. Just trying to explain this for the camera. Now, remember earlier in this video, I said, if you're training in a Koryu Ninjutsu or Koryu Bujutsu and all this kind of thing, and um, you're not, you don't have some sort of randori or, or sparring in your curriculum, you, you should apologize to those arts. I strongly agree to that. And I, I'll be honest with you, there's a shit ton of people that they post the most hateful shit underneath my videos. Because they're like, no, you should, don't need to spar to make your students better. For you guys that believe that bullshit concept, I just want to let you guys know, and if you guys don't like the truth because it hurts, well, that's fine. But the truth of the matter is, the person that wants to fuck you up on the street doesn't give a shit about you. They want to hurt you. They want to stab you. They want to shoot you for the $5 that's in your wallet. They give zero shits. And if you guys are watching this video or martial art teachers and you refuse to put your students in a position to where they don't have to face defeat in an environment that's totally fixed, you don't put them in a position where they have to prevail, you're a shitty martial art teacher as far as I'm concerned. A teacher is supposed to put the students in position to be able to excel. That's an absolute. I have so many students that have come and gone because they got their ass whooped 
And then I'm like, yeah, well, got to be better next time. Oh, they don't want to hear that shit. So they take it up the road to, and they do Taekwondo or whatever, whatever. They do all this easy shit because over here they're just getting their ass whooped and they can't take it. And then they go do some easier shit and they explain, they, they, they process the shit in their head and they, and they figure out, well, this is, this, may, this is better because of this. Then you get these people, and here we go, you get these martial art teachers who say, well, yeah, but in a real self-defense situation, which is why I wanted to, uh, I wanted to make sure that I defined Goshin Jutsu or self-defense away from fighting. In a real self-defense situation, when someone's coming at you with a knife or a gun, you would not use any of those techniques. It's not the same thing. I agree, it's not the same thing. They're, they're absolutely correct with that. If someone comes at you with a knife, you're not doing a roundhouse kick to their fucking knee. I mean, we can agree to that, right? I understand that. But here's where they're absolutely fucking wrong. They put it off like, well, our art is so deadly that we can't spar. If you're teaching your children or your students, if you're teaching your kids and then students how to punch and kick, right? If you're teaching the Temiwaza, you're teaching them how to punch and kick, then they need to be able to compete against somebody else with punching and kicking. If you're teaching them how to do throws, Nagewaza, they need to be able to compete against somebody else doing Nagewaza. It isn't about just doing it hands-on. It's doing it hands-on against someone who's trying to outdo you. Because in a real match, in a real fight, in a real self-defense situation, the essence of that is someone is trying to outdo you. Someone is trying to beat you, defeat you, hurt you, kill you. That is it. And if you don't have the skill set to rise to the level to outdo someone who's trying to beat you, well, then you're just not as good as you think you are. And that's the problem nowadays. We live in a world of just straight pussies all over the fucking world. Absolutely. All they want is more knowledge. Oh, I do 20 different martial arts. Well, if you do 20 different martial arts, why the fuck do you suck so much? That's my question. If you do 50 different things and you read a thousand books, why do you suck? Because more is not better. Better is better. More is more and better is better. And too many people do not want to work hard to make themselves better. All they want to do is they want to amass more knowledge. We live in a world where you can plug in your phone and you can get the damn temperature on some third world country on the other side of the world. You can learn all this shit, all this knowledge. Everyone got all this knowledge nowadays, but no one has any wisdom. It's like everyone's got all this knowledge and everyone's just fucking stupid. And they got no skills. And that's why this, this generation of pussies that I'm talking about, they have no skill set, no tangible, actual experience. That's why no young people can get any goddamn jobs. Even though you see help wanted signs everywhere. Because no one wants to hire someone that doesn't have any experience in doing anything. And then when you give them an opportunity, they whine and cry because it's too much goddamn work. Because they're looking for an easy way out. And the dojo is not much different than life. The dojo is a teacher of life. You know, and in my experience, for you guys who are watching this, in my experience, life is fucking difficult. It's hard. Everything that you want out of life, you are not the only one that wants that. Let me explain that to you guys on the camera. I don't give a shit what you want to do with your life, but you're not the only one that wants what you want. Okay, so if you want to be an actor, or you want to be a, a singer, or a dancer, or a chef, or a mechanic, or a racer, or a basketball player, or an athlete, or whatever it is that you want to do in life, you're not the only one. There's a shit ton of other people that want the same thing you want. And there's a lot of people that's willing to work harder than you to get it. So if you ain't willing to work hard to get something, you ain't going to get it. You're just going to be part of the goddamn problem. You're just going to be this little, you know, go around the fucking, the government will control you. That I guarantee you. Now, martial arts is the same thing. You get certain martial arts schools, it's going to say, oh, well, you know, come in here and every other month, no matter what, in a year and a half, you're going to be a black belt. We're going to give a black belt to little Bobby. This one little, this bastard the other day got on my fucking YouTube channel, wrote the shittiest comment ever, but you know what? I left it. And the reason I left it, because I think it exposes him as being a shitty ass teacher. I'm not interested in how I can make the most money. I make a living doing what I do because I'm honest and I'm real. And I tell people the way it is. And if people don't like that, they can take their fucking ass to go somewhere else. But I'm telling you, if you guys do that, you, it's okay. Go second place. But just know that's what that is. When you leave to do something easier, it's not as good as this. Now, there are, now am I saying that the Buddha Rukai is the only school that does sparring and full contact? No, not at all. Not. Absolutely not. There are lots of great teachers out there and great organizations in all types of martial arts that implement striking drills and, and, and grappling drills and, and uh, clinch drills and throwing drills and weapon-based randori and all that. There's lots of organizations. And if they're doing that, kudos to them. Because that right there, a good old-fashioned country ass-whooping is going to be the best teacher you're going to get because you're going to learn how to do things really quick. 
than just the stagnant kata of one, two, three. So I'm not saying we're the only ones that do this. I'm just saying that we do this. And if you're going to an organization that they're gonna say, we're gonna teach you the way of the samurai, and then they don't have you spar, and they don't have you do you know drills, randori drills and sparring and all this kind of stuff, then they're losing the essence. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave with this, because you guys are gonna be like, no samurai spar. No, you're right there too. But again, your closed-mindedness is what makes you wrong. Lighten the fucking YouTube world up today, and I. The reason it's important is because there was a time, and I and I mentioned this in I think my last my last video, uh, where all of these arts were military arts. You were in the military to do them. When the samurai was studying kenjutsu and taijutsu and jujutsu and tanto jutsu, those were military arts. They were serving a lord and they were being paid to soldier. And those were the arts that they were studying to go to war, to kill people. Then Japan politically changed. They changed to a more modern military, right? They got a navy and an army and all this kind of stuff. The people who were, who were teaching these ancient martial arts, so these koryu of kinjutsu and bojutsu and taijutsu and jujutsu and ninjutsu and etc. Every jutsu, shuriken jutsu, the whole bit. All of those schools, all these schools of martial arts moved to the civilian world. Japan became more of a... Uh, a modern military. They went into the guns and the machine guns and the, the infantry and the navy and they made it look kind of like our army, our military looks. They wanted to change the way their military was, okay? And we're not, we're not gonna talk about history, good decisions, bad decisions, that's just the way it was. All of these Ryuha, the reason they survived is because when they got pushed into the civilian life, all of these schools of martial arts now had to teach civilians how to train in these ancient warrior arts. And to do that was difficult because at, the, you know, in eight, previous to 1868, all of these arts, they were only taught to soldiers. They were only taught to people who had the mentality to kill. They weren't taught to little Bobby up the road who's just looking for a little black belt who wanted to just protect himself against a bully taking his goddamn lunch money. No. The only people who learned these arts previous to 1868 were fucking soldiers who were paid to kill. There's a different mentality with that person than your stay-at-home mom that wants to learn self-defense or little Bobby that wants to protect himself from a bully for someone kicking his ass for his lunch money or some kid who has low self-esteem that just doesn't want his ass whooped every time he walks to the goddamn, you know, game co. Do you catch what I'm saying? I mean, we're talking just mentality alone. There's a big fucking difference. So how do you do that? How do these arts who get pushed out of the military, these military arts, over here? Well, something's got to change. You have to start implementing certain rules. You start teaching certain things. So then you see this term that even though the, the, the way of the warrior, because we see the way of the samurai in Hagakure, the way of the warrior, the way of this, in uh, Book of Five Rings, Goro no Sho, Miyamoto Masashi, we see them talk about the way all the time, but they never... Each school defined the way of the samurai completely different. Do you know what I mean? Like the Yagyu Shinkage to you, the way is different than say like you know, Miyamoto Masashi or different than say the Hagakure or different than you know whatever, whatever. Every one of their own clan or Ryuha had their own the way that they, they kept their school to. And in a way, that's the way martial arts are now. Every school has their own etiquette and values and such and such, which is perfectly fine. But what ended up happening is, from a cultural perspective, you push all these things over from the military arts over to the civilian arts, and you got all these masters. You have the master, these ninjutsu masters, and taijutsu masters, and jujutsu masters, and koshijutsu, and kopojutsu, and jujutsu, and taijutsu, and shurikenjutsu, and every other fucking jutsu there is, right? Kobujutsu. All these masters have to start teaching people that aren't soldiers. So what has to happen now? This code called bushio, the way of the warrior becomes more prevalent going into the 1900s. 1868, no more samurai, you know, so 10 years later, 78, 88, 98, you're going through this transition of shit. All these masters are now starting to teach civilian life. We gotta teach civilians how to be war, how, what it's like to be a samurai. Here comes, here comes in the late 1800s, going to the 1900s, Bushido, the way of the samurai, the way of the warrior. You know what I mean? Because they have, they have to teach people and they wanna keep this. So now you go through the whole 1900s, this evolution goes through. 
So when people are like, well, why are these kōru arts taught, martial arts taught in, uh, why is ninjutsu taught in a dojo? Well, that's why, because ninjutsu isn't any other different than any other jutsu. If the taijutsu arts went to civilian life, and the tanto jutsu went to civilian, and jujutsu, and bojutsu, and kinjutsu, and the aijutsu, and every other jutsu, shuriki jutsu, why would ninjutsu be any different than any other jutsu? It's not any different. It went to the civilian life too. That's why. Because everything else did. That's where it funneled. And that's where we get this. That's why we see where it's at today. Some people don't want to admit that. People don't want to, you know, they don't like the reality. They think sometimes, well, it was better. It was better in the 1500s than it is now. Okay, well, that's your opinion. You know what I mean? That's your opinion. That's okay. Some people only want to study, well, I study ninjutsu from historical documents in the 1500s. That's okay. Do what you got to do. You be you. Knock yourself out. You know, some people are like, no, I only want to study from th this part. I only want to learn this. Well, that's okay. You do you. But here at the Buddha Dukai, we study these ancient warrior arts. We understand, we, we, we dip deep into each of these kata and try to make a modern variation. And then we take these skill sets with these ancient masters preserved on scrolls and we try to enhance them the best we can. One thing that sparring gives us, or randori, or kumite, or whatever, again, whatever word you want to use, it gives you the opportunity to test your skills to see if you can defeat another person that's in front of you at the end of the day. And the reason that's important in Koro training is because that's what the samurai did. That's the, We talk about the essence, the essence of the warrior, the way of the warrior. They trained to defeat the person in front of them. That's why it's important. That's why it's got to be part of training. I, I definitely don't think kumite or sparring needs to be... And this is my shot at all you guys out there that do sport martial arts, or you guys do the, uh, the you know, the MMA and the kickboxing, and you know what I mean? Okay, so this is my shot to all of you guys out there that do sport martial arts. I definitely don't think sparring needs to be the majority of your curriculum. Absolutely not. Sparring needs to be, in my opinion, 20% at best of the curriculum. 80% needs to be the keiko, the kata, the, the, the training of the old ways. 20% should be you of 20% of your training should be you testing your skills to keep developing that. And that development of skill we call it bushi ki. Bushi means like a warrior or samurai. And ki means spirit or energy. Samurai spirit or warrior energy. And that opportunity to be able to test your skills in a situation that you cannot control against another person who's trying to outdo you is an extremely important and integral part towards training. And I feel sorry for all of the students who have to go pay their money to a martial arts school and their teacher is so, I'll use the correct word, the teacher is so focused on self-improvement of his business or her business that all they want is money, that they do not do what is necessary for the student to grow. And that's sad. You know, and that will never happen in this organization. If people can't take physical training, you don't need to be part of this organization. If people don't want to test their skills and get thrown and punched and kicked and locked and rolled and grappled, and you don't need to be part of this organization. There's lots of other organizations that won't do that to you. I promise. And they love to take your money. But here, you're going to have to. Because I refuse. The name of this school, Budo Ryukai, literally means School of the Warrior Way. And our whole purpose is to preserve the ancient ways of the warrior. That isn't just the Ryuha. That's not just the Kata. It's also the spirit. And that's what I mean. That's what, that's what Kumite does. It allows you to polish the spirit and keep that spirit alive. You know what I mean? And I think that's a very special part of martial arts that so many people choose to leave out.